Yes, yes. So, but, so maybe we can start with some questions. Uh, there's some new people, so... Um, um, Sonia, I'm, uh, welcome to you, and we're just going to go straight ahead. So, um, you know, I'm not going to create much context. We'll just get into it and, 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 and get on with it. Uh, Geshe, so uh, some of the questions. So, for instance, there's one that uh, um, the one lady asked. So, um, she wants to know, so if, if we are, and, and, you know, this is something that, that uh, women and many people have struggled with. They, they're being asked to accept smaller, smaller roles. They are they asked to turn the other cheek and to <coughs> um, sort of take the pressure that comes their way. And they find it very difficult to stand up for themselves because, um, you know, they get dominated by, by people maybe. And so the question is how to deal with if we are asked to be smaller, to accept ill-natured people, to turn the other cheek, um, then where does it leave our self-worth? And how do we respectfully, kindly stand up for ourselves and set parameters for others? You know, so that is the so. There's many questions. So I don't know. Are we able to start with that one? Maybe. What does it mean the turn the other cheek? Yeah. So it means like if they get, um, it means if they get not slapped physically, but if they if they get um, maybe um, if they reprimand it, somebody says an unkind thing towards them. They are expected to say nothing. They cannot stand up for them <coughs> because they may be dominated. Mm. So maybe they 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 in a position where they are like sometimes the, the the word is used like a doormat. You know, like a doormat. So you always tread on, mm -hmm. on somebody. So sometimes people feel <coughs> like a doormat and they're not respected for who they are and they are taken for granted, uh, and so forth. Um, if you could maybe comment on how does such a person stand up for themselves in a kind, compassionate way to draw boundaries and make the other <coughs> understand that, um, hey, you know, I'm also a person and I also need to be respected and so forth. Is that, is that something you can, we can discuss? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. As we have discussed earlier, <clears throat> that sufferings comes due to two things. First one, too much self-centered attitude, right? We are not saying that you shouldn't love oneself. We should love oneself, of course. But if we love too much for oneself, then it will become self-centered attitude. Then it will develop ego, then it will develop anxiety, then it will develop uh, insecure feeling, then not giving a forgiveness, no tolerance, and self selfish, not thinking about the other's benefit like that. So then the other one is not knowing the reality, right? We consider appearance itself as a reality. Then we face a problem, you see. So these are the two things that we get. Uh, these are the two things. That's why we get lots of suffering. So in a life, in a life, as I've told you earlier, when we say, I am so compassionate, I am so kindness, you are compassionate to whom? Your kindness to whom? To your family? To your family? To your friends? Or to the others like strangers or enemy? So we get confused between the attachment and the genuine compassion. The real compassion develops from the your enemy. And that's why we consider your enemy is your greatest teacher, right? Then also at the same time, why? Because the, your enemy is your greatest teacher. Why? Because they teaches you love, compassion, kindness, and all these actions are unconditional. But the things that we show love and kindness to your families, to the friends, it's more of like conditional, there's expectations. Then we, again face a problems. 
So the people who harms you or like people who cheeks you, like whatever you are telling. So one we should consider as, oh, they are the real master who teaches me how to show tolerance and love. Then at the same time, as I've told you earlier, when I finished my Geshe program, PhD degree, the, my mom, what she said to me was, don't be arrogant, right? If you stay humble and the, uh, let's say, <clears throat> humble and the uh, down to earth, everyone will love. Everyone will love you, not in a certain time, not in a certain time, but it will take times, right? So as for the people who practice love, compassion, and kindness, so in the beginning, it looks like the other person is mistreating you. And when he do it again and again, then he realized that, oh, I shouldn't do it. He also or she also feel guilty feeling by doing it. Why? Because the other person is keep on showing a tolerance, right? Now, not saying anything doesn't mean you are tolerating. There are two things. One, not saying anything by thinking that, oh, I should forgive him. Why? Because out of ignorance, out of these things, like he is doing, keep on like that to me. And he's the one who is accumulating a non-virtue and he or she will suffer in the future. And truth always prevail, right? So once they come to know the truth, everybody knows the truth. So it's not me who's going to suffer in the future. So I forgive him like that. One person. The second person who's not saying anything, but keeping quiet, it looks like one is tolerating, but one is keep on recording all the data. Huh? Then after a month, it will explode like a pressure cooker. Bang! You did this, you did that. Huh? So, so that person, he will have uh, anger, hatred, jealousy, like that. So with the logic, that's why I, the last time I said, when we talked about the compassion fatigue, right? The tolerance, the love, compassion, kindness, these are the ones who try to develop with the logic will stay longer. And the people who just try to develop through the emotion, it will disappear very soon, right? So in a real life, in a real life, when they do it again and again, again and again, again and again, then one should try to correct him, right? So the people who shows the compassion, tolerance, doesn't mean that you have to take whatever they are giving or whatever they are harming you. Right. So out of compassion, one should say that what you are doing is a wrong thing, right? As a person, I love you. Okay. Now we should be able to differentiate the person and the action. Okay. Actor and the action. Yeah. As an actor, I love you, mm. right? But the action that you are doing it, you are doing a wrong thing. So you don't have an ill feeling towards that person, but you are trying to correct him through compassion and kindness. Why kindness? Because of him, because of this, his action, he's going to suffer in the future. So I don't want to let him to suffer in the future. So I should tell him what you are doing is a wrong thing, but it doesn't mean that you are not tolerating. You are tolerating, but out of compassion. Now, why we should separate his, the action, and the actor, he and his action? Mm. Why? Because when we do something wrong, what do we say? I'm so sorry, I won't do it again. So, when we ask for the forgiveness, we separate me and my action. When I'm able to separate me and my action, I should be also able to separate the person and his action. Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't do it with love, compassion, and kindness, and over here, forgiveness doesn't mean that you should forget everything. Right? 
Give forgiveness. Why? Because I deserve happiness. If I don't give uh, forgiveness, even I don't see his or her face, but his words, when he or she is speaking in some other room, if I come to hear his or her words, I will get angry. Right. So his only the Dalai Lama keeps on saying that <clears throat> uh, if I keep on thinking the Chinese did this, Chinese did that, and I'll be the victim. And I won't get a proper sleep and I will fall sick. Then enemies will feel so happy. Oh, I'm so happy. He's sick, man. Like that. And the his the his honest the Lama, some of the, the lamas, like the monks who spent like 25 years in Chinese prison. And his holiness, when he met them and he asked, did you felt any threat in the prison? And they said, yes. The answer was losing our compassion towards the Chinese army. Not of their own life, but losing our compassion towards the Chinese army. They are doing their duty. At the same time, they are accumulating lots of non-virtues. They are sowing the seed of a suffering for the future. Oh, because of his action, they will suffer like that. So, like the same way, the people who keep from like seriously harming you, right, show love and compassion and tolerance. Through the aggressive in retaliation, it won't help. Why? Because Anger cannot be overcome by the anger. Anger can be overcome by the love and compassion. Darkness cannot be illuminated by the darkness. It has to be illuminated by the light. Like the magnet, negative, negative, always repel each other. I don't want to see her face. I don't want to see his face. Always like that. If one show positive love, compassion, kindness, right, then other will minus positive contracts each other. Like the same way in a family, no matter who we are, how many families do we have, one or two person has to show a tolerance. Otherwise, all the time, it will become you and me <laughs> argument. <laughs> I did this. You didn't do that. I did this. So yeah. every time. Very true. Geshe? So it, it's an understanding. Yeah. yeah, very well put. Somebody asked, somebody wanted to know, do you get upset and angry and anxious sometimes? And how do you handle it? <laughs> of course, I'm a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Without this, I won't be called as a human being. I'll be considered as a robot. Difference between the human being and the robot. Huh? A consciousness. Okay, yeah. Siri, how do you feel? Siri. <laughs> huh? Alexa, are you feeling sad? There's lots of coronavirus. <laughs> so, so no, that's right. Between the human being, right? Between the human being and the robot is emotions. Now it depends upon how much you get. The people who have so much self-centered attitude, they'll have more problems. Who keeps on saying my, 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 like that. Now the scientist has proved who has more self-centered attitude, they are more prone to heart attack. So if you don't want 
Heart attack. <laughs> Sooner or later, very soon. So we should think about the other's well-being. The tears that you shed for yourself and the tears that you shed for the others, there's lots of difference. The tears that you shed for yourself, there will be a sadness, either low feeling or like anger, hatred, fear, like that. But the tear that you shed for the others, it will give you a sense of a pleasure, a happiness. And his honest the Dalai Lama keeps on making fun of the scientists by asking like, we, we used to think that the brain is so smart. When we, when we feel happy, tears comes out. When we feel sad, tears comes out. The brain doesn't, can't differentiate which is happiness tear and which is sadness tear. If it's a sadness tear, it should come from the right. If it's a happiness tear, it should come from the left. Oh, he's feeling happy. It's a uh, tear is coming from the left. Oh, oh my God, like he's feeling so sad. It's tears coming from the right. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very confusion. So like the same way, when the father dies, the elder brother cries and the younger brother cries. Elder brother cries, oh, now who will look after me? Now who will help me? Now what will happen to me? There's a sense of insecure, fear, and he is crying for himself, but not for the father. But the younger brother thinking, oh, if the father could have lived for a little bit, one or two more years so that he can see the, the grandchildren and we can have a good time like that. So both the brothers, they are crying and neighbors are thinking, oh, they are so sad huh? and they are crying. But elder brother is crying for himself, but not for the father. Younger brother is crying for the father. So it's very strange. Right. So as for me, my teacher passed away, my father passed away, my mother passed away. So, yeah, being a human being, right? So I've got emotion, I've got anger, I've got a jealousy, I've got a hatred. If I don't have anything, then I'll become a Buddha. Right. Then you have to, <laughs> you are on the earth, then I have to use another kind of like something from another palace. Yeah. So we all are in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. So now the thing is, the difference is how we train our mind. Right. When you get this, how do you deal? When you get that, how do you deal? So in a life, if you think about, let's say, as I've told you earlier, between the animals and the humans, between the animals and the humans, we think that, oh, this poor animal, like that. But in terms of mentality, they are more happier than the human beings. They don't care about tomorrow, but we care about five-year plan. Right. Then between the human beings, small children and the adult, the small children, they just want to eat and play. That's it. Huh? They don't have hatred. They don't have a jealousy. They don't have expectations. Right? They live in the present moment. Now between the adult and the, the, the people who are the autistic, Right. We think that, oh, what a poor child. They are autistic. They have a mental problem. But in reality, the last time when I went to, the, the, uh, to Mumbai in one of the restaurants, all the attendants, they are autistic people. And I just look around the cafe, 
not even in the one single picture, they have a kind of like fear posture, worried posture, doubt posture like that. All the pictures. But as for us, what do we have to say? Smile. Right. Then we have to make a fake smile to show that I'm so happy. Right. So the autistic people, they live in the present. They don't live in the past. Don't, they don't live in the future. So they are much more happier than us. Now, in terms of the adult, one who accepts the reality and trying to be practical, they are more happier than who don't think on these things. So we think that nothing will happen to me. So what do we say? Harsh reality is better than false hope. Right. So as for me, it's just trying to be practical and try to live in the present moment and see what's the situation and try to tackle it rather than following after the emotions. So I'm like you. <clears throat> So last time when I was in Israel, they asked me, oh, are you feeling cold? At that time, like it was windy and all these things. And they said, why? He said, you are a monk. Huh? I said, just cut, cut my hand. It will come out the blood. <laughs> I'm still the same like you. <laughs> 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 and one time we went to the tune, right? for the hike and some of my Indian friend and the when the sun starts coming out and it is so hot and I put, uh, took out my sunscreen and I put on my face like that and she just asked me oh Demi oh being a monk are you allowed to use the sunscreen I said I'm a human being sun is not differentiating who is monk and who is not it burns equally I have to be practical, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Keshe, yeah. there was another question about memory. Can mm -hmm. you talk about memory? Uh, the memory, so let's say the science, what do they believe? Like, let's say if it talks about the neurology, right? The science, what they believe is the all the memories they are restored in the hippocampus so as i've told you earlier the science they talks about the five consciousness and the buddhism they talks about the six consciousness the sixth one is the mental consciousness so the memory it's a kind of like a mental 51 uh, is one of the 51 mental factors of the mind so as for the consciousness right the mind it can be divided into three, gross level, subtle level, very subtle level, right? So in the gross level, the science, what they believe is when the brain the, is born and the, at the same time, mind also bones arises. And the, when the brain dies, mind dies. So what they think is all the hippocampus, all the hippocampus, in, you know, all the memories are restored in the hippocampus, right? All the memories are restored in the hippocampus. Now the question that arises is, in the East, like Buddhist and Jainism, Hinduism, we believe in the life of the death, right? And the, let's say, a person who dies in the North, and a young child, a young born baby, then after two years, people who were born in the South, try to tell that, oh, in, in the North, I have this, in the North, I have that, like this. So they can recall the past lives. So now it's not only in the Buddhism and the Hinduism. In the West, in the Kentucky University, Dr. Ian Stevenson has done lots of research, he being, the, a doctor in the hospital, he encounter with some of the patient who tells that, oh, in my past lives, I'm this, I'm that. 
there he met like uh, people who believe in the religion also who don't believe in the religion so he get confused so he has done lots of research right so in, not only in the white people in the native american people and in the east there are a number of people who can recall their past lives now the question is if all the memory is restored in the hippocampus as for the christian as for the uh, islam they bury the body in the graveyard right so when you bury the body and the earth all the body get decomposed right eaten by the scavengers right the ants and everything and as per the hindu and the buddhist we uh, cremate the body so what happens is all the hippocampus and everything serotonin and everything like dopamine and everything get burnt now how if hippocampus is you know, let's say if the memory is restored in the stored in the, the hippocampus hippocampus is destroyed completely there's no trace at all then how a person who who died in north and born in the south can recall does it mean that hippocampus all went all the went from north to south no so we talk about the six mental consciousness we are not saying that memories are not restored stored in the hippocampus yes but very cross level so when we go to a some certain new places right it looks like oh i've seen this place where 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 we call it deja vu so. yeah in my dream like that mm-hmm. the science they call it a deja vu that's right yeah but the science what do they say is we just remember we just remember or like we just get the dream right that we have experienced earlier so the new places that you you haven't been and how you can like get a memory get a uh, dream so the from the buddhism we call it karma ah le like that so the we don't deny that the consciousness doesn't depend upon the brain eye consciousness nose ears tongue physical consciousness they depends upon the brain but it's a very gross level another little bit subtle level when we go to bed right so we dream of four or five types of dream one when you're about to fall asleep you will get a dream it's more of like a day activity then we will get have another dream right before getting into deep sleep that dream we won't be able to recall properly then in the deep sleep we won't be able to recall anything even though we are dreaming that time eyes nose ears tongue all this consciousness dissolve one to another one to another into the sixth mental consciousness so at that time in the deep sleep when someone calls your name tamchu tamchu i won't hear anything when someone tries to open my eyelid like that look here he is i won't see anything when someone brings my uh the most the delicious fruit if he keep try to keep it in, in front of my nose i won't smell anything and by taking out my tongue pulling out my tongue if he just try to put it i won't taste anything when they call me oh thank you thank you thank you like that i won't feel anything physically at that time all this consciousness eyes nose physical the five consciousness has submerged into the sixth mental consciousness then after that 1 am 2 am 3 am i will also have another dream i won't be able to recall it properly then in the end when i about to awake then I will, i will have another dream so which means i will be able to recall that dream 
right? Then afterwards, eyes, nose, ears, tongues, we again talk. Again, all this consciousness starts functioning. Right. Then the very, very subtle dream, very, very subtle consciousness, it comes only at the time of death. At that time, we call it clear light. So highly practitioners, when they die, their body doesn't decompose for a day, not for a day, for like 13 days, 20 days like that, without using any chemicals. So in the science, whether the person is dead or not, they will judge, they will test through the ECG. But in the Buddhism, whether the person is dead or not, we define about two breath, outer breath and inner breath. Though the outer breath has ceased, the brain function, the brain is dead, but still the inner breath functions. So Stanford University, they, along with the, the, the Tibetans, they are doing a research. So Mind and Life Institute, so they have trained to the, both the allopathic and homeopathic doctors in Dharamsala, and they have kept the machine. And what they, they do is they just put the EEG and everything, and they send the reports over here. So it clearly shows the very subtle consciousness, very, very subtle consciousness. It doesn't have to depend upon the brain. Right. So these memories, right, it's a kind of like not only restored in the hippocampus, but in the sixth one, mental consciousness. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was another question about the self and the no self. And if you can maybe, and I don't know if, if the aggregates, if you can maybe just explain that again a little bit, the difference between or the, the, the absence of the self. The Buddha in the, let's say, if we talk about the other religions, in the monotheology and also some of the polytheology, let's say, almost all the other religions, let's say, except the Buddhism, all the other religion they talks about the self, right? And the some they call it the soul, right? Soul. In the Hindu they call it Atma, like that. Then the the Buddha is the only one who says no self. No self, so when we say there is no self, everything is emptiness, oh, it's nothingness, then there's a danger of falling into nihilism, right? Over here, to understand the emptiness and to understand the no self, we have to understand two truths, conventional truth and the ultimate truth. When we talk about the conventional truth, right, it's more of like without analyzing, without introspection, right? Now with the ultimate truth, it's more of like with the introspection, with the analyze, analyzing, and with the, the experiment, right? So this particular self and no self, even the animals, they know that there is a self, right? But they don't talk about whether self is permanent or impermanent, like that. So it has to be some kind of like philosophy, right? Something to do with the philosophy point of view. So in between the Buddhism and the Hinduism, everything is same, like in terms of the moral values. Then when it comes to the self, then there is lots of like arguments, whether self is impermanence, whether self is uni unitary, like that, or clean or like that. So 
a Buddha when he came to do that. So let's say before the self, if you take an example of uh, this one, a car, right? My car. And it looks like it's perceiving appearance as if independently, right? Then when we go and try to introspect with the ultimate now, oh, where is my car? The door is my car, the engine is my car, the wheel is my car, what? So if we just dissect, right? If we dismantle it, we won't find the car. But it doesn't mean that car doesn't exist. Car exists, but with the help of interdependent. Mm. By bringing every assembling together, then it becomes a car like that, mm. right? So when we see a car itself, like thinking, oh, it exists independently, then we get attached to it. When we just go and see dismantling everything, we don't get attachment, right? So over here, attachment comes from the ignorance. So attachment, because of the first misconception, first ignorance, misconception, attachment, then suffering comes, right? So let's say if you take an example, uh, a, a mobile phone, when we look from the outside, from the shop, if the mobile phone falls down, uh, we have a kind of like neutral feeling, thinking that, oh, mobile phone falls down like that. After paying 100 US dollar, mm -hmm. right? When it falls from your hand, <gasps> my mobile, like that. Uh, fear, there's a fear, right? And after paying $100, and if the mobile phone fall down from the worker, the helper from there, <gasps> can't you hold it properly? Mm. I will sue you. Right. We develop anger, right? I want another mobile phone, mm. right? So it's the same mobile. Mm. One, when we see for the first time, it's a neutral. Then we develop fear. Then we develop anger. Why we develop fear and anger? Why? Because now there's a attachment. My, like that. So because of the ignorance, then misconception, then attachment, then suffering comes. So emptiness, not the, the emptiness, it's more of like, okay, why you, be chill, man, be cool. Where's your mobile? Mm -hmm. The cover is it your mobile? The screen is it your mobile? The, uh, the, the, mobile, the, the chips is it your mobile? Where's your mobile? Right. It's more of like philosophical. Mm. Oh. Like that. So as for the impermanence, some people, what they think is impermanence is the antidote for the attachment. Right. Mm. So let's say, if this glass falls down, I would say, why should I worry? It's an impermanence. Mm. Then, after seeing a glue, what I will do, oh, if I just attach this, I can make something else. Again, attachment comes. Mm. So the impermanence, the idea of impermanence helps to come out of the attachment, but not completely. So it's only the ultimate truth, emptiness, which will help us. Mm. So here, the idea of emptiness, idea of the, um, uh, the no self, it's a negation of inherent existence, independent existence. I'm sorry, it will take some time to understand all these things. Why? Because to understand this, we have to study 16 years. Ha <laughs> ha!
It's not a cup of tea, Lash. If it's a cup of tea, then everyone, will, we don't have to study for the last 16 years. So, yeah. so as for us too, right? As for us too, right? In the debate courtyard, we keep on debating. Everything is impermanence. Everything is impermanence. Everything is impermanence. Like that. Once the debate is over, we'll call to a friend. Oh, I won't be able to come and eat uh, for the dinner. Can you just keep some food for me? Huh? <laughs> for the whole one and a half hour, we keep on debating impermanence. But over here, deep bottom of heart, you think that nothing is going to happen to me. It happened to me. I'm permanent. <laughs> right. So it's very strange. So the no self, if you just think like self, I, right? I'm happy, I'm in South Africa, I'm in my room, I'm having a tea. Who's the agent that I? Is it separate entity from my body? If it's separate entity from my body, I can't say I'm feeling cold, I'm in South Africa, I'm doing Zoom, I'm eating food like this. If we consider our body itself as a self, right? Then we cut our hair, we cut our fingernails, we don't say, oh, I fall down. And at the same time, we, uh, what, uh, sometimes we donate our organs to others, right? Then we don't say, oh, I donate I to others, right? Then if the consciousness, I consciousness knows tongue, ear, consciousness, if it's I, then they will have too much contradiction of having I. Then what is I? Oh, I is not an independent existence. It's a interdependent. With my consciousness and with my body, assembling these two together, then we call it I. Right. So let's say right now I'm a human being. In the next life, if I'm born as a cat, then I will say my claws, my tail, my whisk, like that. Right. Then if I'm born as a, a what? Dolphin. Huh? Oh, this is my home, the water. Oh, I've got a fin. I've got a tail like that. So at that time, it changes. So that I depends upon the consciousness and the body. Then we call it I. So it's a interdependent, right? So as for the science, what do they think is, as I've told you earlier, the, let's say, in the early times, when the 23 chromosomes from father, 23 chromosomes from the mother, and perfect mother's womb, thinking that they will conceive a baby. Now, at present hour and in the early times, many of the couples having 23 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes, then perfect mother's womb, still they don't conceive a baby. Now, what do they say is, Oh, it's, it seems like it needs some external force, right? But in the Buddhism, what do we call is the, that external force is the consciousness. So if this is the mother's womb, right? Now 23 chromosomes from here, 23 chromosomes from here, then a consciousness has to get inside. So this consciousness is the consciousness of the previous life. So this is the primary causes. Then secondary causes, 23 chromosomes from father, mother, and the perfect womb. So normally when the male and female, when they are doing, having a physical relationship, no matter human being, kind of sentient beings, dog, cat, fish, whatever it may be, thousands of consciousness are around it. And whoever has the karma will conceive into it. 
Then we will form a baby. Then we call my body, I, like that. So the I self, it's like a guest. And the body is like a guest house. So thinking that self is a permanent, nothing is going to happen. Then having too much self-centered attitude, we get suffering. The idea of no self, right? It doesn't mean that I doesn't exist. I exist with the help of accumulation, bringing together assembling of the consciousness and the body. Then it says no self. So to know self, the ultimate truth and the emptiness, to understand it, we have to understand the interdependent okay. and the dependent origination. So in the dependent origination, a tree, right, an apple tree, to grow dependent origination of cause and effect. So over here, to grow this, to grow this apple tree, what do we need? We need the seed. Seed is a primary cause, like the consciousness. Seed has a potential to grow, but as long as it doesn't get soil, water, sunlight, it won't grow. Right. So, to depend on the origination of cause and effect. Now, dependent origination of whole and parts, the second. So, this apple is big, this apple is small. Comparing to this apple and this apple is small. But comparing to this small apple, this is big. So, there is no kind of like inheritance, existence of big and small. Compared to what? It is big. Compared to what? It is small. If there is no east, there won't be west. If there is no up, there won't be down. So, dependent origination of whole and parts. Then, dependent origination of mental projection. Oh, this is green apple. Oh, this is orange, this is yellow apple, this is red apple. It has got a characteristics. That's why we call it, this is green, this is red, and this is yellow apple. Comparing to green apple, this is yellow. We don't say like this. So it's more of a mental projection. So that's why whatever kind of like feelings that we experience, it depends upon our mind. We are like a projector. Uh, others are like screen. Uh, when we show when we show a red light on the white screen, it will show red. When we show black, it will show black. When we show green, it will show green. Screen has changed. No, the screen has not changed. The projector, the color that they are throwing out is changed. Right. So what do we say? Oh, he is so good. Why? Because he has helped me. She is so bad. Why? Because she didn't help me. Then after a week, what do we say? He is so bad. Why? Because he didn't help me. Oh, she is so good. She tells some good things to me. The person has changed. No. I have changed. Like that. So when I'm angry, even if somebody tells me a good thing, I will think that, oh, they are telling a bad thing to me. Right? Right now, we are happy. So what do we say? Oh, what a perfect weather. Huh? If I'm angry, oh, the sun is too hot. It's so humid, like that. 
So it depends upon you, right? So we have to guard our own thoughts, right? First, we have to bring a change for oneself. If you are in a happy mood, even if someone tells you a bad thing, they will say, okay, let it be like that. If you are in an angry mood, if someone tells you the same person to trying to tell a good thing, what do we say? Please shut your mouth. I don't want to listen to anything. Huh. So everything, it depends upon our emotions. When we have a group photo, what we will do? Oh, how do I look like? Oh, it's perfect. Then you are happy. Then we start looking for the others. In a group photo, if your face is like, mm, like that, something we got distracted, then we will say, who is the photographer? They have not taken good. So I is important, right? So it's very strange, the mind. So that's the Buddha, that's why the Buddha said, it's your own mind who will give the most suffering, not the others. So that's why, what do we say? Dipachya micha shing, don't commit any unwholesome actions. Gyeva pisum tsovache, Accumulate virtues as much as you can. Rangi semni yonsu du. Control, tame your mind. Dini sangi tembahi. This is the teaching of Buddha. Thank you, Joshua. Sure. Very good. Thank you. Sure. This was very interesting. Very useful. Thank you. Are there questions from anybody? I think we, uh, we, we've we got time maybe for a dedication after this, but anybody got some questions? What time is it? It's oh, uh, we have about eight minutes. 10 minutes or so, eight minutes or so to go. Yeah. Um, we have more topics, but maybe we can, if it's okay, next week maybe, uh, today is Thursday, and then maybe the, not the weekend, but maybe next uh, Tuesday, if it's okay with you. Next Tuesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, yes, yes. We'll take a break on the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> now these days, every day is a break yes. for all of us. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> in the earlier times, we have to write a long letter application. Even though you are not, even though you are healthy, you have. To say, I'm not feeling well. Please give me a leave. Now everyone is on leave. <laughs> we don't have to write any application. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when we have like too many holidays. Again, we feel bored. No, it's not right. good. No, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why the Buddha said, eat moderate, sleep moderate. So maybe we, we should say like, uh, have a holiday moderate. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we say? The Buddha, the fourth month of the fifth, fifth day of the fourth month, of fourth, 15th day of the fourth month, it's a uh, Buddha's, the birthday and Buddha's enlightenment day and Buddha's the entering into Nirvana means passing away day. So all these important three things, getting birth, getting enlightened and passing away all comes in three days. So we used to say Buddha is very clever. Why? Because he don't want his followers to have too many holidays. Holiday of birth, holiday of enlightenment, holiday of and was <laughs> so one holiday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, thank you, Geshe-la. Can Could you do a, a short dedication for us, please, Geshe? Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Keep your body straight and stay relaxed and calm. Listen to the quietest corner of your room.
inhale exhale gently focus only on your breathing Your mind might get distracted to the sounds, to the image, to the smell, to the taste, to the physical pain. Just acknowledge it, don't hold it back and let it go by showing your mindfulness. Bring your awareness on the breathing. Even though we all are happy, healthy, at the same time, outside the door, everyone is suffering, no matter who we are. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst. At this hour, develop a kindness compassion for the other's well-being. Why? Because my happiness depends upon the others. If the whole society and if the whole world is healthy, you'll be also be healthy. At the time of need, how can I neglect and ignore them? So, May I be the light to illuminate the darkness of the others. May I be the source of happiness to remove the suffering of the others. May I be the medicine to cure and heal the sickness of the others. May I be the nectar to quench the thirst of the others. May I be the food to get strength and energy for the others in India in some parts of the other Asian countries, as people are saying, 
it's not the coronavirus who's going to kill us. It's the hunger that will kill us. May I be the wisdom to overcome and dispel the ignorance of the others. If I can help, I will help. If I can't help, at least I will restrain from harming. Think globally and act locally. Be practical and realistic. Healthy body and healthy mind. Think positive. Automatically, you will have a healthy life. So give importance not only on the physical hygiene, also give importance on the mental hygiene. Amen. Thank you. Richie, thank you very much. Thank you, that was so Thank you, Keshe. Thanks everybody. No, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you.